Howdy, it's uh, Phil here from the Next 72 Hours team. Just thought I'd uh, do this quick video on the Rescuelink Plus 406 MHz GPS personal locator beacon from ACR. Uh, we picked up this unit a couple of weeks back um, and um, just thought we'd share a little bit about it and uh, experiences with it so far. So, um, first off, the price. We picked this up from Mountain Designs here in Australia, in uh, Brisbane. It was $449.95, a regular price. Uh, we had a good chat with them, and the good team down there at Mountain Designs in the Logan Mega Centre were very kind to offer us a 20% emergency services discount, um, as we are all volunteers with the emergency services here in uh, Australia, and that brought the price down to $359.96. So that made it the cheapest that I could find, even on eBay or... Um, any of the other online sites so that was fantastic and a big shout out to the team at Mountain Designs uh, for both their service, their goods and uh, their dedication to the volunteers and emergency services here in Australia it was much appreciated um, this is pretty much just the box, there's nothing special about it at all it did come sealed with a sticker on it that said that you can do the registration at the following website www.amsa.gov.au forward slash beacons um, if we just open that up, you'll see that it's very basic, nothing special about this at all. Paperwork came in here, beacon in here. Could have been vice versa, I don't remember now. I'm really sure that's the way around it was. And along with that paperwork, one of them's the instructions, the other is a warranty card, which I haven't filled out or looked at yet. And the third piece of paper was the registration paperwork. So your options are to fill out this form here, which is two pages long, send it off to the AMSA and register your beacon that way with all the uh, data from it, the model where you purchased it, the type of beacon it is, your details, the supplier's details, emergency contacts and any other details, or alternatively do it online. So I chose to do it online and the beacon was registered in around about 10 minutes, so it's all rough and re uh, ready to go very quickly. Uh, the beacon itself is fairly small. On the back of the box it does suggest that it weighs less than a couple of energy bars and takes up less space. Uh, the beacon is about 1.6 inches wide by 1.9 inches thick and 4.5 inches high which works out to be roughly 12 centimeters um, high by around about 5 centimeters by 5 centimeters, or just over um, wide and thick so not sure about the energy bars I think it's slightly bigger than energy bars and I would say it's definitely heavier than a couple of energy bars apparently it depends on the type of energy bar but overall at 150, 140 grams it's not that heavy at all um, if we take a look at it we do a bit of a comparison to size another item that I carry most of the time is this very basic Garmin E-Trex GPS looking at them, the GPS itself is probably, or it doesn't look at from this angle, a couple of millimeters uh, shorter than the um, beacon, but looking on it sideways it's definitely the beacon is a lot thicker. If we were to compare that to something else that we might carry most times with us, you've got your cell phone here, smartphone, you'll see that the beacon is quite a bit, uh, it's not as wide as the phone, but it is about two times as thick as the phone and that's the phone with the cover on it so um, it's reasonably bulky this is the floating uh, version previously the version was sold with a black pouch on it some sort of neoprene floating pouch this has this green backing on it here which um, is permanently attached and that's the floating part of it here so it also has these handy loops here at the end so mine's currently attached although I've taken off for the video by a velcro loop to my pack uh, but you could attach this to your boat if you're going to be using it as a backup in a boat to your personal flotation device to your pack or to your vehicle or wherever you're traveling and using this so that's a very very handy part to it indeed so if it didn't have the flotation device on it it would obviously be a little bit thinner than this so uh, Again, as I said, it's waterproof and it floats if it's dropped in water, so that makes it easier to retrieve. Um, ideally, it shouldn't be dropped in water, I guess. It should be attached to you at all times. But um, accidents happen, I guess. 
it puts out a whopping of 5 watts of power, so it's much more likely than other units to reach those satellites in bad weather. Um, it also is equipped with a 66 channel GPS receiver, which means uh, well, that's quite considerably higher than most other GPS models available, which means it's going to require or acquire your position faster than other um, GPS beacons when it's coming from a cold start. So when you're just turning it on and pushing it, it's going to be a bit faster than other ones just because of the number of GPS channels that it has in there to receive from. Also, it's quite hard to see, but at the top here you've got a white LED. If you were to operate and turn on this beacon, that LED would flash continuously until the unit was stopped or ran out of batteries. Uh, also, there's a little green one down here, and that flashes when you're doing the testing. So I'll go over that in just a moment. Um, three levels of integrated technology on this one here. You've got the 406 megahertz part of the beacon, which is going to send those up to the satellites. You have the GPS receiver in here, which is going to give you the latitude, longitude positioning. And you've also got the 121.5 megahertz transmission in here, which is going to help those searches on the ground and possibly the aircraft above locate you also when they're closer to your position. Um, so one of the benefits of registering, of course these have to be registered by law, but one of the benefits of registering this information online is that not only do the searches and rescue departments get your location, but they also get all that other information, such as your emergency contacts, who owns the beacons, you can update your trip details on there, so they would be able to see if you'd updated it, where you were planning to be away, um, any other details you might have included online, such as who is you, who you're going with, how many people in the party, what you were taking with you, any allergies, any special conditions, what vehicle you were parked in, etc, etc, and when you were due to be out. So um, it's always, always a very good idea to put in a trip log with someone that you know, but also having this and the ability to do so, and the ability for the rescuers to have that information at hand straight away, that's going to decrease the time it's going to take for them to start a search and increase the likelihood of you being found in a uh, quick manner. On the back of it here you've got a small sticker that folds over. You've got the basic instructions of how to activate the item and under here you've got more registration details. You've got the expiry date of the battery there, which is the 1st 2018, which means it's still got another good six years in it before that needs to be replaced, unless we go and play with the test button a whole lot. And also a sticker here advising you that the beacon registration is mandatory. This should have a AMSA registration stick on it, but mine hasn't arrived at this point in the mail, but as soon as that arrives I'll stick that on there, and when that expires I will change it uh, when it gets sent out to me. So it doesn't cost anything to register these, but it is important that they are registered. Um, as far as activating the beacon itself, the aerial to the beacon is located on the outside here, runs all the way around, and is clipped up the top. So to activate it, we just flip this out here, that brings up the beacon, yeah, I bring up the aerial, sorry, and it pops out like that, and then we just push it up like this. So that's the position you want the beacon to be in when you're acting. Alright, so as we were saying, we've got the T function here, T button and the power button. T for testing, power for turning on, activating it. Uh, again, it's very important that you don't activate it if it's not a life or death situation or an emergency, because doing so could lead you to some very hefty fines and or a imprisonment sentence. So, um fairly strict on that. It is a last resort, it's something you're going to use when it's a life or death situation. Someone's injured or something's happened and you need to get out in a hurry. Um, you're going to be wanting to use this, but prior to that you would, if it's not important or it's not as, as dire, you'd want to use other things that you had available to you, such as a cell phone, uh, radios, etc, etc. If you've got no other choice and you need help, or you're in a place that doesn't have cell phone reception then you're going to be using this and you're going to be very thankful that you've purchased it but you do want to make sure that you don't play with it and treat it like a toy and that if you do have children you keep it out of their way so they don't children have an amazing ability to open anything and you don't want the rescue teams turning up your door with a bill for that um, also setting this off when you don't really need to or it's not an emergency is a waste of resources and it puts other people's lives at risk
Um, bearing in mind these signals are picked up all around the world by, by rescue services and systems, you can see you're going to waste uh, a lot of people's time all around the place. So when you're done with this, uh, sorry, uh, the test functions there, you can hold this down for one second to test the actual internal functions of the GPS, and if you want to test the actual GPS itself, you can hold it down for approximately five seconds. Read the instructions, it'll tell you about the light flashing scenarios and what you're going to see to make sure that it comes back with a positive test. Obviously, if it doesn't come back with what you expect, you'd want to have it sent off to be checked. The battery is not a user replaceable, but it is replaceable, so when it's time for that battery to be replaced, you can send that off and have that um, changed. Otherwise, if you have used it in an activation, you'd want to have that replaced as well. Uh, the reason we picked this up was because we're doing a lot of testing recently on our kits that we're putting together here, survival kits and snake bite kits, and Australia unfortunately is home to seven or eight of the most deadly or venomous snakes in the world. Queensland, where we're located, has most if not all of those as well, um, so it also has very, very poor mobile phone coverage out in the bush and in the... Uh, desert areas or away from the civilization so it's essential for us that we carry this it gives us peace of mind and it gives our families peace of mind too when we're out there knowing that we've got this piece of equipment with us and if worst comes to worst we can use that so it's about planning for the worst hoping for the best um, so when we get out there in the next couple of weeks out in the bush um, we might do another quick video on it we might even test it so you can see what the lighting is like uh, test the test functions that is not activated but otherwise that's pretty much the video for you today um, thank you very much for watching if you've got any questions or comments please feel free to leave them or uh, send drop us a line email us and we'd be happy to ask them so thanks very much for watching